is about this world famous rock star who's she's undergone some vocal surgery and she's recouping on this gorgeous island with her gorgeous lover and someone's an ex-lover swans into town and <laughs> <laughs> and things go from there and um i was wondering luca and tilda you've worked together i think this is is this your fifth film together it feels like the 18th but it's yeah. probably only five it's been 25 years it's our anniversary this year yeah rafe and tilda you always so naturally play characters that are, this is an overused word, but complex. There's so many shifting interiors going on. And I wonder, meeting each other, if it was a delight of sorts, or was it just awful, you know, working together? Meeting each other? <laughs> meeting each other uh, and working together, both being very good delight. at it. A pure delight. Yeah, I mean, a real partnership. And a real, yeah, uh, it, was, it was like playing a game. And I suppose... I mean, we didn't actually get much time to, to, to play together in the Grand Budapest Hotel. But those scenes um, were just, t together, were just perfect. And we can all imagine the torrid love yes. scenes there, you just, <laughs> between the 90-year-old Madame D and, yes. Um, but, but it was like playing a game. It was, playing this film, it was a little bit, especially with this, you know, inability to actually speak words to mm. one another. It was a little cat and mouse, wasn't it? Yeah. At times. Yeah. I thought we just fell into the relationship. Yeah. And I think we both just didn't, we didn't, I mean, Luca's not given to over an analysis, <laughs> which is good, no, in a good way. Yeah. And I think you create this atmosphere. Mm. We had a great set where everything, I think that the reality of the set helped. Mm. And I just think, and one of those things where there was a, a connection. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I loved about Marianne not talking, you've said before that um, you are much less interested in words than in gesture. Mm. Um, and I wondered, was that something that you, well, why is that? What, what is it about sort of getting rid of language and going to character that way that is I intriguing? I think I'm really much more interested in inarticulacy than articulacy. I, I think that there's a, you know, Communicating with one another is really hard, and I find that really interesting. And it feels like that's a really rich place for me to put my attention. And not that many people do put their attention there, so one has to really kind of burrow around for these opportunities. There's a tradition that maybe comes from the theatre, I don't know, very, very active writers that constantly write people who are very articulate and all write like, speak like playwrights. And that tends to, you know, bleed its way into the theatre, and I'm frustrated by that because I don't think that's the best use of the cinema. I actually think the cinema is really about that amazing luxury of looking at someone when they're not being watched by anybody else and seeing them, like I am now, struggling to find the words to kind of get it out and, and, and put it in front of other people and failing most of the time. Mm. I, I'm very interested in mess and and uh, attempt. Uh, so this was an opportunity to look at that. And, and I, you know, I started working in film, in silent films with Derek Jarman, and mm. I uh, have a real love of silent cinema. And, and so this was a way of, of just experimenting with the idea of a very potentially talky film, or rather a, a film about communication, or lack of it, or mm. the difficulties of it, with one person, uh, not being able to actually use words. It was, a, it, as, as Rafe says, it was just an adventure. Mm. Harry fills every room he's in. Did you also fill a little bit more with Tilda because she was silent, so you're going a little further in a way? Yes, I think that em emerged once the script reflected the silence. And when we got... It was interesting because I, I, initially when Luca mentioned this thing, I, I, I was unsure what it would do, but then it, it, it became apparent actually it was a very <laughs> interesting and brave, smart thing. And I think that uh, um, it, it, in a way, it, yes, uh, in the scenes we had, um, it in a way made more sense of Harry's verbosity in the sense that he's filling the space. Mm. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about it, but I think that's right. Mm. And Luca, did you have any sort of qualms about this, you know, your, your lead being silent? Oh, well, I was super excited. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. 
<laughs> I'm serious. I, <laughs> it was fantastic. And uh, immediately, and sometimes when I am very enthusiastic and I say, oh, fantastic, it can, can sound uh, a sort of false enthusiasm, but I was really, really mm. endorsing it. Uh, and then I called the writer and I said, oh, Tilda had this amazing idea. And there was a drop silence, like <laughs> drop dead silence, like literally. And then I, and I said, well, what do you mean? I said, I mean this, literally, I mean that. <laughs> I, uh, the, it, will, it will be boring for, bo for, for you both because I said it before in another interview. I like to really change things at the last minute. I think mm. it's fantastic. Mm. It's only if it's a really thoughtful idea that has a, uh, that deepens what the endeavor. Um, so it was really great. And I, I can't imagine this movie without, with Marianne Lane speaking. Mm -hmm. It's also, I, I like the, that the movie is made out of the cloth of reality and that we can give a sense of what is the space, the place, the actual uh, um, reality of what we deal with in our life through the lens of the characters you portray. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, uh, I have an, uh, the aim for uh, creating a sort of uh, iconicity. And I think that that, for instance, is a very great step into mm. making iconicity out mm. of um, the movie. Mm. It does. And a lot of ambiguity is also vis-a-vis -vis your reaction, your relationship with your daughter, which was also ambiguous in a way, in terms of your feelings towards her. Yeah, I mean, people have commented on that. I mean, I, and maybe the, the script doesn't overly um, explain what's happened. It's inferred in some lines Dakota has that we've just met that she's the result of some fling that Harry has had and that he's only just been made aware of her. So he's in the sort of weird, I think quite believable that she's very young, she's attractive, and he's probably a man who, you know, looks Hats at a around. woman in a certain way. Yeah. But I think that he's, he's quite honest about in that scene in the street where he says, do I think she's sexy? Sexy? Mm. Yes, I do, and I confront mm. my I confront myself about mm. what mm. it is. But I don't think he's crossing a line with her. Dakota Johnson, she's so um, complicated in this film. She's so sophisticated and is a great character, Penelope. Mm. She is, and more so than the Jane Birkin in the original, which was a bit of a cipher. Mm. You know, she wasn't. The, Dakota is. And I might have said Fanning incorrectly before I met Johnson. She's a real, um, she's a seductress. She's mm. here, here to stir stuff up. Mm. And your character is torn. Mm. I mean, how do you, mm. you know, is she, she's obviously very competitive with mm. you. And why is it for Harry? Is it for, mm. is it, what, what is it with her? Well, What's her deal? Well, there, there's something, I think, you know, worth mentioning about these rock and rollers. There's this whole way in which they, you know, the benzene that keeps them going is that they will never age and they will never die. Um, and they will always be able to push the limits, as you said. And, uh, and um, they certainly don't expect to suddenly be presented with grown-up daughters or sons. Um, Marianne, you know, it's not mentioned whether she has a child. We assume she doesn't. Um, and there's this ex-lover and this girl who could conceivably be conceivably be uh, a child of hers um, in terms of her age. It's like this sort of spectre of, of things moving on, of parenthood, of things that could have been, of where they are in their lives. Well, we're going to go to some audience questions and I'm going to let you read this one, Tilda. It's for you. <laughs> I can't read that out. <laughs> I can't. It's very sweet. I can't believe I'm going to have to read this out. It's amazing. <laughs> what is an extraterrestrial goddess like you doing on a planet like Earth? <laughs> um, living amongst humans like <laughs> everybody else. Uh, <laughs>